Hello, everybody. Uh, I want you to take a little trip with me for a moment. Um, just imagine that you're all in heaven, right? Everybody's having a great time. You're all sitting around. Everything is peaceful and calm. People are playing harps and halos and everything all over the place. And then in the middle of all that, there's a commotion over near the throne. And you see somebody kicking the shit out of God. That somebody who's doing that is me. And I'll tell you why. It's not that I'm anti-religion or anything like that. I'm not. I'm just angry. And I have to be angry with somebody. Um, my mother got dementia about, oh, we started to notice it about five, six years ago. And she's bad now. My father died eight years ago. And things, she seemed to go downhill very rapidly after that. It took us a long time to know what was wrong with her. And we were floundering. And I'd love to... To get back to the heaven thing, I want to say to God, you took her husband, then you gave her dementia, then you've given her some cancer as well, just for a laugh. I'm going to say, do you think that's funny that you would do that to somebody that doesn't deserve that, somebody that, had a, that deserves a better end to their life? Um, as I said, my mother got dementia um, about five, six years ago. We noticed these weird changes. And... As a family, we, f we were floundering. We just didn't know what to do. We brought her to doctors, and then the doctors were saying, oh, now we'll have to send her to the geriatric unit out in Vincent's to get tested. And to do that, you had to get an appointment, which was six months in advance. Um, so there was all, and all the time, she kept getting worse. Now, there were very funny things in it. Um, I mean, I, the, when she was funny, she was hilarious. Um, I remember one time we took her to Marks and Spencer. She always wanted to go to the same places. So she'd go, she always wanted to go to Marks and Spencer's in Grafton Street for our lunch upstairs. And the staff there, I'll never forget their kindness to her. They used to come over to the table. They knew there was something wrong. They could see a deterioration. But they used to say, oh, hello, madam. How are you? You look wonderful. And she'd look in bits. But she'd say, you look well. And so she'd be saying, oh, she was delighted with that. Um, and there was a cleaner in Marks and Spencer's who used to come over to us every day, every time I was in there, three times a week with me mother. And she talked to me. She was a fan of Mrs. Brown's boys, and she'd chat to me, and she'd say hello to me mother. And this one day, she came over, and she's chatting away, and she says, hello, Rory. And she says, hello, Mrs. Cowan. And my mother smiling at her. And then my mother turned around, and at the top of her voice, at lunchtime in Marks and Spencer's restaurant, which was full of people, my mother, who never swore in her life, she was a lady, my mother just said, I haven't a fucking clue who the hell she is. <laughs> now, everybody's just snapped around, and they were all looking at and I, all I could do, I just burst out laughing. I couldn't do, I really couldn't do anything else. But those, those funny moments are few and far between. There were other times then where you just did not know what was happening. Things are changing from day to day, even from hour to hour, and there's no plan. What makes me angry is, God forbid if you got cancer or if you got anything else. The minute you're diagnosed, from the time you go to your GP, there's a set program of what you've got to do and what treatments you have to get and where you go. With dementia, it's like there's nothing. It's, they, they, they don't know what to do. They don't know where you've got to go to. We had terrible trouble getting care for my mother. I didn't, I, because she was the first woman in our family to get dementia, so I, we didn't know anything about it. And... People are very kind, and they will say, oh, we, we try and get this, and we'll try and get that. But in the meantime, my mother's getting worse and worse. Um, so eventually I went to the... I just thought, there's something wrong here. We didn't know she had dementia. We just knew that she was, wasn't caring about her appearance, and she was wearing the same clothes every day, and she was going to bed in the same clothes. And it wasn't... My mother was a lady. She was, always took very, like, great care in what she wore and how she looked and in her appearance and stuff like that and then we know that was a big sign that there was something seriously seriously wrong here it wasn't just her being forgetful it wasn't her just asking the same thing over and over and over again and driving us all mad but so eventually I went down to the HSC doctor in Dundrum and I said there's something wrong and I don't know what to do and they came up and they said okay we've got to organize this we've got to organize that and they said um, eventually, I'm skipping all over the place here, eventually they told us after taking her to Vincent's that 
she had dementia. Then things started and said, okay, now you're entitled to some care. Um, and the care was great. Um, I can't, that's why I'm angry at God. I have to be angry at somebody. I can't be angry at the, the doctors. I can't be angry at my mother. I can't be angry at the carers. I can't be angry at the government. I would love to be able to say the government aren't doing enough and to direct me anger at them, but I can't, everybody is being kind. So I have to be angry at God because I'm angry at something and that's the only thing I can be angry about, angry to. And I really hope there is a God so as I can go in there and smack the head off him when I meet him. <laughs> but my mother, um, the carers that we were getting from, maybe some of you might know this, you don't get an awful lot in so far as when people have, they go into, sometimes they need a lot of care, in demen like when they have dementia. My mother was entitled to maybe they would send somebody up for an hour one day and an hour the next day or whatever, and then maybe two hours on Saturday, which is all lovely, except that the carers are rushing to get, they have so many different jobs to get to, so they're rushing in, get her changed, get her fed, get her cleaned up, and off we go. And they're rushing, and it's different people every day. And that used to really upset my mother because she didn't know who was coming into her house, and she kept saying to them all, get out of my home, get out of my home. So eventually, I was able to contact somebody in the Alzheimer's Society, and they were wonderful. I spoke to a girl there, and I'm probably speaking now a turn here, because she told me not to say anything. I rang them, and I said, I explained the situation, and they said, well, we'll go out and visit your mother and see what care she's entitled to. And I said, no, I want to pay for the care. I, can, I need to get somebody in, people in that can be there all day. And she said to me, well, this is a woman that used to work with us. Now, don't say anything. And here I am saying it in front of everybody. <laughs> don't say anything, she said, but this is a woman who used to work with us and she's left and she's gone into doing private care now. If you get her, and I said, is she good? And she said, well, put it this way, if it was my mother, I'd want her to care for her. So I thought that'll do me. And I met this woman and she was wonderful and she was lovely. She was in her 30s and she was fabulous. And she met my mother. The two of them got on like a house on fire. And everything was great until then she had to leave for family reasons. And through a lot of different things, I've eventually ended up with three carers from my mother from eight in the morning till nine at night. And she's got wonderful care. Everything is brilliant. And what the carers are doing with her, which I think is so important, they're bringing her out. When my mother got dementia first, she was staying in and we didn't want her going out because we thought, well, if she goes out, she's going to get lost. She's going to go somewhere. We won't find her. We won't know what's been done or what, what, what. So we were always thinking of the worst things that could happen if she went out. But the carers that we have, they take her out. They take her up to mass every morning. And some days now my mother might say, she'd be in mass and she'd let a roar out of her, home, home, home. <laughs> the priest will stop his sermon or whatever and they just wheel my mother out and I'm fine with that I have no problem with it. I'm fine with that and the carers are brilliant with that and they take her up to this hospitality thing they have up in Dundrum every for the old for the older people and they take her in there and people are so kind they know my mother has dementia and they make a fuss over her and they're happy with her and they make her cups of tea and they'll chat to her and they'll talk to her and they'll sing songs and they'll do all this type of stuff so my mother some days she'll stay five minutes, other days she'll stay for the whole thing. Um, but the main thing is she's getting out of the house. Um, she's bedridden, so they have to put her into a hoist to get her out of the bed and get her dressed and get her into the wheelchair. It's a big thing to do. It takes about an hour, an hour and a half to get her ready to go out. But they do it and they get her out and it's wonderful and she meets people. Otherwise she's just lying in a bed looking at the ceiling and that's going to drive her completely that that's not going to do her any good whatsoever. So the main thing is to anybody that is caring for anybody with dementia, and my heart goes out to you, it really does, but please try and get them out if possible. Don't leave them in the house. Take them out, um, take them around, take them to meet the people that they know. If there's clubs or anything like that, take them, take them to mass, take them wherever. People will know, if they, if they say something out of turn, like my mother that day, I haven't a fucking clue who she is. When she's, people know, and they're kind, and they don't sort of look down on anybody with dementia, or they don't, they're not cruel, they don't say unkind things. They are, people are fine. So don't think that you've got to keep your, your, your family members at home. Um, 
it really would be better if they did get out um, and were part of society. They don't. They shouldn't be hidden away. Um, that's what I think. Anyway, my mother. I was in Australia, I'm going all over the place here. I'm so sorry because I didn't do any notes. I just thought I was going to speak from the heart here. I was in Australia touring with Mrs. Brown's boys in January, and I was the other on the other side of the world, and I got word that my mother had days to live, and. I was basically told by the production company, by the producers over there, that um, I couldn't go home. Now, I didn't ask to go home. I was thinking, will I stay? Will I go? Like, if I go home, like, what can I... But they said, you can't go home because if you do and your mother doesn't die, if people in the audience, um, of the audiences while you're away, if they demanded their money back, you'll have to pay for every seat, full price for every seat. And that could have worked out at hundreds of thousands of dollars if people, if there were enough people decided they weren't paying. Every seat was $150, so that's the way it was. So I couldn't come home. They said to me, for insurance reasons, anybody could say, oh, my mother's not well, and off they could leave a tour. But if they said, so you can't go. If she dies, by all means, you can go home and, come, and then come back. And I said, oh, Christ almighty. But my mother rallied round and... Then, and we were in New Zealand in March, I got word, oh, she's dazed, she had to have a stroke. And I thought, oh, please, ma'am, just hold on for another 10 days, I'll be home. Excuse me. Oh. She rallied round again, and I got home. And this has happened every month since March. I'd been told, I was, in, I was filming the Christmas specials, Mrs. Brown's Boys, last week, and I was told, she's back in hospital, she's out there having a stroke, and they keep saying this, and she hasn't had a stroke, all that's wrong with her is, when she tries to speak, she gurgles, she would go, rrr, rrr, rrr. she can't make the words, and they think, oh, she's out there having a stroke, and then they do the tests, and they come back and say, oh no, she didn't have a stroke, it's just something else. So I'm on this roller coaster, at this stage, my mother, I keep being told she has days to live. And then she rallies round. And if you have any other disease or any other illness, you can get treated immediately. And there's great care for everybody. Um, they, there's a system of what needs to be done. But it kills me that there's nothing for dementia. It's everything's can change by the hour, every hour. And you, do, you don't know what's coming, you don't know what to expect. And if anybody else is like us, we are floundering, we are all over the shop. We don't know what's going on with my mother. I went up to visit her today, she was in great form. I went up to visit her yesterday, she was in terrible humor. I went up to visit her on Saturday and she, she looked straight through me, she didn't know who I was. And then other days she'd look at me and she's big smile on her face and she's going, ah, and, but I don't know what I'm trying to say here, except that she's in good humor when she's out, when she's brought out. My sister brings her into town on the Lewis. It takes her an hour and a half to get her ready, puts her on the Lewis, brings her into town, wheels her around Stephen's Green, puts her back on the Lewis and comes home again to Dundrum. And my mother is in great form with that. The carers are putting on music for her. Um, of old songs that she likes and she's trying to sing along. She's in great form if she gets out. I find that when she doesn't get out, when the weather's not so good and she's at home, that she seems to go more into herself. I can say the same thing to my mother every day and it's like the first time she's heard it. I tell her her hair is lovely, I tell her she's looking great, I'll chat to her about the weather, I will chat to her about what's on television and she'll smile and she'll nod her head. Whether she understands, I don't know. But I have to keep talking to her. I have to keep doing something. And if it, I've, to get her out, she will go out and she'll point at things and she'll smile and you'll bring her for a cup of coffee. And she, her world, that's what's happened to her now. This is the way she's ending up. But I mean, it doesn't have to be a sad, horrible time just because she has, she's in the final stages of dementia. Things can be good for people and that's the, the message I would say to everybody. If there's carers in the audience, I, you are all brilliant. You are all fantastic to be able to do that because I couldn't do it. 
but if there's carers here, you're all fantastic. Um, if there's people who in families who are caring for relatives, my heart goes out to you because I know how tough it is. I really, I'm, I'm fortunate. Thank God Mrs. Brown is such a success because I can afford care for my mother, but not everybody is in the same boat that I am. I really can't believe how kind people are and they are, they are genuinely lovely people. And it's only when something like this happens that you realize how wonderful total strangers can be. Anyway, thank you very, very much. <laughs>